You're listening to Tabletop Arcanum, a podcast dedicated to learning and exploring the hobby of tabletop gaming. Your hosts are Justin Taylor and Richard Geese, so sit back and relax as we talk, discuss, and joke our way through the hobby we love so much. Build your perfect beach. In Santa Monica, you are trying to create the most appealing neighborhood in Southern California. Will you choose to create a calm, quiet beach focusing on nature, a bustling beach full of tourists, or something in between to appeal to the locals? Each turn, you will draft a feature card from the display to build up either your beach or your street. These features work together to score you victory points. The player with the most points wins. Welcome to Tabletop Arcanum. This is Justin. And Mindy. And we are doing our 50th anniversary episode. 50th anniversary? Oh, I guess 50th episode is more appropriate. <laughs> yes. Um, and in lieu of the AMA, we are doing a review for Santa Monica, the newest game out of AEG Studios. Justin, what have you played lately? A lot of tabletop simulator. <laughs> yes. Um, but we've played... Santa Monica a bunch mm-hmm. in preparation for this review. Um, I've played Arkham Horror the card game, uh, testing out some of the mods and, and fan-made scenarios that are in Tabletop Simulator. Uh, Robinson Crusoe, which is a very brutal uh, cooperative game about uh, surviving on an island and hopefully not dying, but you usually die. Um, played Twilight Imperium 4th Edition well into the late night while you were working on a puzzle. <laughs> uh, Cthulhu Death May Die. Uh, we both played Forgotten Waters. And, uh, I played Nemesis. So, did I think like two rounds of Nemesis in the last couple weeks, so. Been busy. Yes. Very busy with your online friends. Pretty much. What about you? Uh, besides a few games of Santa, Santa Monica mm-hmm. and the tabletop simulator for Forgotten Waters mm-hmm. uh, with some friends, which was nice. Um, other than that, that's about it. I've been doing a puzzle, <laughs> which is not a board game. It, Doing a puzzle, you, you kind of did most of it in one <laughs> sitting in one night. Yes, I still have to finish it, but, you know, that will take some time. Might be later tonight. But. Okay. Not bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, still a little bit light because of the stay at home and COVID-19 and everything. So, not having the usual game nights, just kind of going through what we can to play and keep good things relatively normal. Yes. So, that all being said, let's dive into Santa Monica here. So, AEG's newest game, Santa Monica, uh, two to four players. Uh, it is made by Josh Wood and art is Jeremy Nugan. And it is just this nice, like, not necessarily vibrant, but very colorful still box. Yes. Um, and all it is is a, it's a card game. Um, for lack of a better term, you're essentially drafting cards from a display into your uh, beach. <laughs> to your city, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this box, um, you know, last time I talked about the last game not having as much color. This definitely has much more color, much more um, pull to pull me in Mm -hmm. to look at it, um, to kind of see if this might be something that I would want to play. So Mm -hmm. that's actually really nice. It's much more, it's a much more beachy theme, obviously. You know, they got the the sandy colors and the the blues and that to go with the beach theme. Honestly, it's a it's a normal box size, which is nice without being over complicated, and and it's all really pretty and good um, good lettering styles, I guess. 
hmm. to kind of draw you in. Um, not it's cursive, so it's not <laughs> always the easiest to read sometimes, but you can actually kind of read this one, so which is nice. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the guts in the inside. Okay. So uh, open it up. It's actually relatively. Um, basic actually on the inside so the you get your manual you get um and then everything else is really just cards and you get some meeples and the meeples come in a couple different colors you get sand dollars which are in different color and like it was like three punch boards it's not a lot of stuff mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that there isn't a lot of game in it because all you really are doing is you're doing kind of a point salad sort of display trying to get different points based on the different cards and you can score on several different ways uh, for replayability obviously the deck of cards and what you can or cannot draft is going to change from round to round and game to game but there's three different end game scoring objectives that can rotate out um, there are sand dollar powers that the players can activate which there's four double-sided ones uh, and you only use two Right. And they're all different, so you have like eight options, but you only get two of them per game. So for variety's sake, there's quite a right. bit in here, despite it's really just like a deck of cards and a bunch of tokens. True. And honestly, I just noticed that the side of the outside, the inside box is decorated in a beach theme, which is really nice. Um, kind of little piece of resistance to the box so okay you like talking about boxes <laughs> i do i like i i like the design part okay okay I'm, I'm a it's just like the tiles like they've got that beachy they've got a cute mm -hmm. little theme to them um one thing like yeah they'll probably add on to this game obviously you can add Maybe. more stuff mm -hmm. it's kind of a big box for what's in it yeah honestly it, it could be a little bit smaller honestly so um so Josh Wood is the same designer as Cat Lady, and AEG Mc Cat Lady too, mm -hmm. and it's about about a third of this box size. And I feel like Santa Monica could have fit in the same same box size. Box size. The, the, rules... the, the rule book would have to shrink down because the rule book is actually the same size as the box, but so it'd but be it... a little thicker but smaller, and that's not necessarily a terrible thing. But the rest of it, yeah, I could probably fit in in if I pull out Cat Lady. Um, oh yeah. I could probably put put everything in the cat lady box and, and just be fine. Yeah. Um, it would be a densely packed box at that point, where this is nice, loose, open space. Mm -hmm. And if they do expand on this game and we pick it up, um, there's more room. I can store everything in here. Right. Um, even if they make little plastic sand castles or something for it. It's true. Yes. There's so. a, there's extra space in there. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's so. definitely. I mean, it's got the space, which is good. So hopefully, at some point, they'll. They'll maybe add more, especially even just tiles and right. And like adding more is just really just more variety. Maybe another visitor type could be introduced. It it has a little bit of flexibility, and but there's a lot of variety in the box already. So just more of the same, it wouldn't be bad. Right. So ultimately, um, there's two rows of display. Uh, kind of a back row, front row, and on your turn you get to draft from the front row. Um, and then there's a foodie and food truck people that kind of rotate and sit in front of different cards. And we take, if you take the card from the foodie or the food truck at location, you get a little bit of a bonus, and then they move. Um, the placement rules are very simple. It's literally adjacent. Mm -hmm. So, and beach to beach. Uh, boardwalk to boardwalk. So right. you're building essentially two rows uh, in goes, your city. Yeah. Uh, the tricky part is coming from the scoring, and there's a bunch of icons based on what's on the cards. So sometimes there'll be a local spot, a tourist spot, a business, sports, nature, or waves, because obviously we're in Santa Monica, right. so yeah. surfing is the theme. And realistically, some of them want to be adjacent to each other. Some of them want you to build a chain where you have several of the same type of locations adjacent to each other. Yeah. And um, it gets harder as you're mm -hmm. building your your city, your your beachfront property. Yep. <laughs> um, 
And then the other thing is you get, there's some of the cards will have activity spots that will require some of the meeples, uh, either locals, tourists, um, to be there at the end of the game to score your extra points. And there's some ways to move them around, but they're pretty, they're pretty pokey. Right. Uh, you're more building them, and then you get them, and then you have to figure out how to get them someplace else, because they're usually in the wrong spot. <laughs> yeah, which is uh, the harder part. Mm-hmm. Um, so game turn is super simple, because essentially you grab a card that you're looking at, mm-hmm. you put it into your, your city, you, it might have some, most of them will have some sort of instant reward, whether it's extra people or a new way to score or something. Right. And that's it. And it keeps going and going and going. So you take from the front row, the back row fills in, so you kind of see what's coming up next. And then the back row gets a new card, card. drawn into it. Yes. Play moves to the next player, rinse and repeat until someone has played their 14th card yes. in their city. Um, so... Pretty pretty straightforward rules. The scoring is what takes a little bit more getting used to. More getting used to, a little bit more time mm-hmm. to do um, compared to, yes, as you're playing and you're pulling those tiles, you are trying to figure out what you're doing and can take a little bit of time, but yep. you have that ability to kind of plan while somebody else is pulling their tile. Mm-hmm. Um, I think especially if you had more people, like four people, give you a little bit more time, but at the same point, not enough in case somebody takes your tile you want yep so um but scoring does take a little bit just because you have to go through everything it didn't it does take a little bit but it feels like it would be like seven wonders where yeah you just go through the end of the game like who has okay and the score pad's really nice you just go down the list like okay activity rings how many points did you get in activity rings everyone does the math figures it out okay your vip who's walking around based on your starting tile gets points Right, exactly. And then you just kind of keep going down. So it does a nice balance of, like, it's very smooth to score. It just takes a little time. It's a little hard to gauge um, where you are in points (laughs) mid-game. Yeah. You can feel like you're doing well, but in the end you're not doing as well as you thought, or... You're not doing well, and at the end, you're doing really well. Right. So, yeah, and then some of it's just a matter of what cards you pull, like, especially mm-hmm. at the end and, and that. Yep. Um, so, I mean, overall... The, the design of mm-hmm. the pieces are good. Um, yeah. They've got a lot of, like, little pictures on them, drawings and that, which are really cute to look at and cute to go through and read the names of the buildings that are on there, mm-hmm. which is nice. Um... There are a few that are kind of hard to see the activity rings that are on them. Yeah. It's just because they're a little busy. Yeah, there's uh, one that's a bike shop and, like, the activity rings on the front of the store, uh-huh. which is where all the bikes are piled up on, so it, yeah. it gets lost a little bit because it's like a little hash Hash, um, a little circle. Nash, yeah, dash circle around it. So, um, so good things that this, the uh, Santa Maca does. What, what? What brings you to the table on this one? Um, I like that when you, you get your starting tile, but mm-hmm. you can build out either direction. Mm-hmm. You're not stuck to one direction and trying to just keep building one way. Um, so you've got two, two different ways you can go, and either you know your beach side or your street side, which is really nice. Um, the designs are cute. You know, the, the what you're doing, you know... Um, pieces are all very colorful and easy to see which are nice Mm -hmm. um the it looks nice when it when you you put everything out and everything's kind of like you're building your city it just keeps looking neater with the art it they they definitely hit a really cool theme Mm -hmm. and um with the way the you're you're putting any number of card underneath a, um, a beach for for your boardwalk and any card that could be on top of it, but they all mesh well. Yeah. It doesn't look... I've never seen one that looks weird. Right. Next to another card. Right. Yeah. And you don't have one card flowing to another besides, like, your starting piece. Mm-hmm. That, you know, you don't have a, a giant building that all of a sudden you've got to get the top somewhere from or something. Right. So, um, so that's kind of the nice thing. Um 
colorful meeples. Colorful meeples, three different colors. You've got your, you know, your locals, your VIPs, and your tourists, which, mm -hmm. you know, um, three different colors, which allows you to kind of easily spot which ones are which. Right. Um, you know, kind of figure that out. The sand dollars, um, they're little sand dollar shapes, so that's really cute. Um, you know, they're the white. You know, they look like sand dollars, which is really nice. Um, the first player marker, I mean... It's a seagull. It's a seagull. It's a cardboard seagull. I know, it, and it works, but <laughs> it's just a little weird compared mm -hmm. to the rest of it. But I, I do get the seagull with the beach theme and everything, so... Mm -hmm. Okay, um, card quad, uh, the other thing that's nice about it is the card quality is... A good linen finish, good size cards. They're like your standard playing card size, so they're not overly small. They're not overly large, um, and the deck itself is. It's a good stack. It's a good stack, so you get a lot of variety. Mm -hmm. um, For the two of us, it was good. Right. I wonder how it would be with four. So let's talk about that. Things that this game does not necessarily. What are the opportunities? And. I feel like the two-player version, the four-player version, are going to feel like a very different game. Yes. Uh, we've only really been able to, to really try it on two-player, mostly mm -hmm. because it's, it's just, just the us. Two of us, yeah. And the cats won't play with us. Well, they will. They'll just knock everything over. Okay, they don't play right. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I could... And the issue we had with two players is because you were only taking one card after I was done out of the display it wasn't rotating very quickly. So Eve, in one of the games, both of us didn't like anything that was out there. It wasn't really working with what both of our cities were trying to do point-wise and scoring. Mm -hmm. But there's little we could do about it. Right. You just kind of had to pull something. So I definitely could see with four people that mm -hmm. having more Three options. Three cards would disappear before you get another pick. Right. Three cards or more. Um, right, there are some way. Typically, yeah. you get one card a turn, but there are some powers that can trigger you uh, to get more than one. Yes. So true. Um, I, I felt like the the time that it took to build a city went mm -hmm. really fast. Mm -hmm. To get to fourteen cars was really quick. Right. And if you're the not paying attention, that can end really quickly, and you're not ready. It doesn't. Yeah. That that would be the only other thing is. The pr your your time and progress in the game of when it's going to end, it almost snuck up on us every time. Like right, like all we would get to count. ten cards and go, oh, we only have like four cards left or three right. cards left, and I still have like a bajillion like Things lists to do. <laughs> I want to try to accomplish, right. and I, then I have to decide I'm not going to do this or I'm, I yeah. gotta which, which is finish okay. working on that yeah. and and finish that now. Yeah. Which is okay. I mean, that gives, you know, gives you that rush of having to do something. Um, one of the other things that I wish was a little bit more, and maybe this is just because we were playing the two people mm -hmm. as two, two people and just the cards we were getting, I didn't feel like I ever had enough time or enough ability to move my meeples around mm -hmm. as much as I wanted to. Um, and maybe it's the cards I was drawing, or maybe it was, you know, something else. Um, but that's just, I didn't, I didn't feel like they were moseying around as much as they should be. <laughs> so. Yeah, I can uh, definitely see that. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's neat because in the several games we saw cards that we never did, and some of them have very unique scoring patterns that we only saw once or twice. But in a couple of the games we kept seeing... Um, the the, uh, the raccoon who had knocked yes. over a trash can. Like, right. That card just came Kid, up on right. like most the of our games. Tree. Yep. So he's cute, but mm -hmm. yeah. So overall, Santa Monica does a really good job of keeping it simple, but allowing some deeper strategy. And how are you building your points? How are you scoring? Are you maximizing each play mm -hmm. to keep it going? And the games we've had have been, um, the first one was relatively close, which we didn't feel very close while we were right. playing it. You felt like you were way behind. I felt like I was doing everything right. Mm -hmm. And our point difference was like six. Yeah. Um, another game we had, 
I, I thought was closer. I thought I was doing better. And it was almost a 20 point difference. Right. So I think that's the one thing that I don't personally like about it is because you can't really judge how well you're doing it until it's all done. Right. And now, it doesn't know. take you out of the game, and I, there is a slight perk on that because we have friends and we know people who, if they feel like they're doing bad, mm-hmm. will just, it. like, they'll check out the game. Right. And just have a miserable time. Well, then, I don't know if we ever felt truly like we were doing poorly, maybe not as well as we would want to. Yeah. But not to the point of like, oh man, I'm not going to win. Right. So. No, I know. And and part of it with the other game that we played is we ended up wanting to go for a lot of the same cards. That's true. Which was for different reasons. And, Mm -hmm. you know, some things were good, some things were bad. And we were still learning the game. So obviously some things I did probably I wouldn't do again. Um, but right, you know, you, and that's, you learn that's as you the go. variety of the, the the nice variety of this game too is that it does have mm. a lot of replayability because they gave you seventy eight cards, right? And realistically, we're going to see about half of that in a two player game, right? Um, about thirty cards between the two of us, drafting wise, and another eight mm-hmm. that are on the board. Right. So, just about it's just about eighty cards, and we get about forty cards in two player game. Now, um, playing it with more players, obviously you're going to have more cards cycle through, so you're going to see a lot more of the deck right. in that. Yeah. And like you were saying earlier, I think that's where um, add on possibilities add on might be is just more variety in the cards. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if it needs anything fancy like new tags or new locations, uh, per se. Because I I don't know. I I think there's enough going on with scoring opportunities. I don't think it needs more scoring opportunities. But maybe different gold cards or maybe different sand dollar powers. Yes. Yeah, I could see that. So, ultimately, like, another version like Santa Monica Mm -hmm. um, 2 is just the same stuff, just different combinations of the same stuff so that you can smash them together right and and make an ultimate uh santa monica out of it or something yeah and i'm not sure how i felt about this whole food truck and foodie Mm -hmm. um it it added a little something but it never made me need to want to pull a certain card because Mm -hmm. i needed you know to use those ups on them um it was more of a, I need this card, and that's where the food truck or the foodie is. Happens to be, and you get yeah. an extra bonus based on it. Also, I probably would have liked the food truck and the foodie to be a different color than pink. Hmm. It's a little pepto bismol looking to me. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know. I When I think of food truck, I think of like a white truck or like a mm-hmm. blue truck or something. And I get it, like the, the locals... Are, are already blue, blue and yeah. you know, the tourists are orange and your VIPs are green. Right. But it was um, like, it could be white, like the sand dollars and like, I don't know. Then I would just think it's an ice cream truck. Well, it's a food truck, ice cream truck, foodie, you doesn't know, matter. You haven't been to Santa Monica, maybe they have pink food trucks out there. They might, they might. It's been a long time since I've been to California, so. Right. I know the ones around here are mostly boring and like steel gray, black. We could just orange. make it rainbow colored, okay? Sure. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, or a gray or silver would be good. Yeah, just, something. You just weren't a fan of the pink. The pink. No. Okay. But that's just me. So it's the same pink as the letter in the box. So I, I never really like thought of it. Eh, not yeah, not really. Yeah. Um. Yeah, overall, I think Santa Monica is a solid game. Um, it plays quick. You don't feel like, even if you play for an hour, mm-hmm. it doesn't feel like an hour. Right. You're constantly doing um, something. You're constantly... Right. It's not a filler not game where, like, oh, this will be over really quick, but it's not also a super long game where, like, okay, here's half our day, gone. Right. Because um, we played Santa Monica once. Right. Um, so it hits that nice middle ground of timing, and it hits a good pace where you don't feel like there's that much downtime. Um, With four players, there may be a little bit more downtime between turns, but with how fast the turns really are, 
because you're really just like, okay, uh, it's my turn. What are my four options? Maybe I'll use a sand dollar power. Right. And like that's it. You don't right. have a huge amount of choice. And what does this give me? Yeah. What am I? What am I trying to do that can make this move? Mm -hmm. And I could see. I can definitely see with four people being a little bit more time because you can't plan as well. Like where it's just the two of us. I can plan. Okay, I want that right. card. And that's the one I took. So now you have to come up with right. another plan. And or, that's what usually took the longest. Yeah. So and then a lot of the other stuff that takes a little bit of time, which isn't necessarily like the person next to you has to wait is you know moving your people or whatever option you have that you can use right away on your cards so um you know if you've got the ability to move or you're getting new people like you don't need to wait on that person before you to do their their end of their turn stuff i mean it helps but yeah um who would you recommend santa monica for what type of players um so, the box says it's recommended for 14 and older. Um, I definitely could see that. you got to kind of figure out how everything works together, so you need somebody who can kind of understand that. Mm -hmm. um, I would definitely recommend for people like me who do not want to sit down and do a long game. They want a shorter game. They want something that doesn't feel like they're waiting on people. Um, they want to kind of keep moving and maybe you know play this game and then play another game or something or mm -hmm. or play this game and play it again type thing and try again so um so someone who would like multiple rounds of the same game or be able to put more multiple. than one game in a game night yes yeah. okay so um yeah i'm not I'm not one to sit down for, you know, hours on end and play a game. No, that's me. That's why I play Twilight and, I know. and Nemesis. And, I know. You know, it's like six hours later and I'm going, all right, on to turn four. I know. But I'll, you know, I'll sit down for six hours and put a puzzle together. But, um, yeah. But, you know, this is also one of those, like, it's a nice game where I can, we can sit and play and we can talk at the same time. Yes. With somebody. So you don't have to concentrate too hard. Um, Mm -mm. To it's what? it's light enough where yeah. you can still have a, 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 a ca ca casual conversation, yeah. And not have to hard focus on it, which yeah. I do appreciate. So I would definitely recommend it for for people like you said. I would probably caution people who don't like point style games or don't like to know where you are in a game. Like if you need a scoring point, like right. if you need to know who's in first, second, third, fourth at any point during the game. This is not, not a game to figure that out on because no. it is the scoring is just so chaotic. Right. Like I can, I even feel like I can kind of gauge who's at least in the lead or who's behind in like a Seven Wonders game, and I just I never got that in this. Yeah, and you really can't because you know you've got stuff that you're not doing till the end of everybody's turn, which mm -hmm. is like moving your meeples around, and so you really don't know how that's going to affect somebody and when your locals can move three spaces compared to your other ones that move one right. you know your locals can travel pretty far and all of a sudden that's you know extra points that you weren't accounting for um for somebody else so yeah right. you definitely can't somebody who needs to know where they stand and how much effort they need to put in is this is not the game for that sure <laughs> All right, so that's kind of who we recommend for. That's who we recommend to maybe back off. Um, good news is if it is a game that you don't enjoy, it is quick enough that it'll be over before you know it. Right. Um, which is the good part. Mm -hmm. um, and it is casual enough that you can have that conversation. So even if you do get stuck in the Santa Monica and it's not your jam, right? it's okay. Um, so overall, I do enjoy it. Um, I do you think it has a home in our collection as one of those more casual-ish games that mm -hmm. is a little bit different? And the theme, honestly, I don't really... Like, you're building a town or, like, a boardwalk and beach empire. It's not, like, the most gravitating theme. Mm-hmm. But there's not much out there that is doing this either. Right. So, it's, it, yeah. it's kind of unique in that sense. Um even though it's not the most exciting theme. Um, it does kind of make me want to take a trip to Santa Monica and actually <laughs> see Santa Monica uh, in, in real life. Mm -hmm. Not right now, though. You can't. 
I mean, mm-hmm. you could get really cheap airfare, but... Right. Well, I would probably be trying to look for my favorite um, raccoon mm-hmm. uh, when I go there. Knocked over a trash con- can? So, if I go to Santa Monica and I don't find a raccoon who knocked over a trash can, I might be disappointed. So maybe I shouldn't go. Yeah. You'll still want to go. <laughs> we got enough raccoons here anyway. It's true. So... That pretty much sums it up for Santa Monica um, from AEG. Uh, just kind of came out, so still relatively fresh. Um, I got my copy through them directly, uh, so you can definitely order it directly through them. Um, even if some of the distributors and, and supply chains are a little tough right now for the local stores. So, it's still available, and I think it was... I think it's like a forty dollar game, if I if I remember right. It's not bad. So it's not on the top end of like the what seems to be the normal like sixty dollar price tag that games are starting to come with now. Right. It's a little bit below that, and I quite mean, honestly, before much, so. for a deck of cards, a pile of uh, meeples. Yeah. Right. I, I don't know. Component wise, I'd probably feel if I paid more than that, I would feel bad. Right. But. Um, there's still a lot of game in something like this. Yeah. So don't shy away from those small box or lower price games because mm. you get less stuff. You can do a lot of good gaming with just yeah. basic stuff. The one thing is, I mean, for us, mm-hmm. when we have game nights, this is probably not pulled out just because it is a two to four person game. We're also in the minority that has like six to eight to ten to twelve player game nights. It is true because we have a lot of people that like board games. So, you know, if you, you know, couple couples, like that would be fine and stuff. But yeah, this would be great for a date night game. It would be. You can have that conversation. You can have dinner. Right. Drinks. Play Santa Monica. Right. Yeah. You know, get out and enjoy smaller groups of people but yeah Mm -hmm. we i mean we have a lot of people that like to play board games so when we do a board game night um it probably wouldn't come out for us so much but i do think it's a good game to come out for people yeah so okay so that's santa monica now next episode we're going to kind of keep up the theme a little bit here um this was you know beach and calming and stuff (laughs) like that but next time we're going to talk about Forgotten Waters, the new Plant Hat Crossroads game, where we're a crew of pirates. Yes. So water's still involved. <laughs> Beaches are kind of involved. Little towns are involved. Little towns are involved. Mm-hmm. Um, but instead we're sailing the high seas doing piratey things. Yes. In, instead of uh, attracting tourists and locals. Yes. So... Um, we'll talk about that next episode. As always, thank you for listening, and definitely reach out to us at Tabletop Arcanum at Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Tabletop Arcanum at gmail.com. We're here. Uh, so if you have any questions, any inquiries, anything like that, let us know. And other than that, I think that's it. Yep. Happy gaming. Happy gaming. You've been listening to Tabletop Arcanum, hosted by Justin Taylor and Richard Geese, and featuring the original music by Paul Moore and Isaac Gilbert. You can follow us on most social media platforms. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave us a review on whatever platform you listen to podcasts. As always, thanks for listening.